Hi everyone, I'm Joe Mazzalotti, and this is a quick demo on how to get Turbo 8 working in Turbo Native Apps. So a quick demo on what we're actually looking at today. I have here two screens pulled up of a blog style website. We have an index of our blog posts that each have a status, draft, or published. They're pointing to the same URL, just localhost root path. And here I'm gonna show you that I, when I open up one of these posts, I can publish it and have my change broadcasts broadcasted to all anyone else who is listening. I can make a title change as well, make sure that we know that this is now published. And you'll see that all of that appears without any page refreshes or anything on my end. Same thing from the show page, I can get rid of that published and we'll see the update happened on the left and also unpublishing it broadcasts that change off to the left. So the code that, that, is, that builds this out is actually relatively straightforward. We have, the first thing that we need is that we need to import our Turbo 8, if you're not already upgraded to that, JavaScript. And second thing is that we wanna add the Turbo Refreshes with method morph to our head tag. This is the application layout. I'm adding scroll preserve to make sure that if we were halfway down a page and a change happens, we'd stay halfway down a page instead of going all the way to the top. The boring part is that the posts controller, here's the update method, looks like anything you used to do before Turbo Streams. We're just redirecting to the post URL. Turbo 8 morphing is doing all the magic of finding which DOMs have changed and making sure that it only updates those pieces. The post record needs a single line. Broadcasts refreshes, tells Action Cable and Turbo and all of the stuff that we need to wire up live changes that anytime this post changes, broadcast those refreshes out to anyone who is listening. And how do we tell that we're listening? Here's the show partial, sorry, the show uh, format, show template, thank you, of what we're looking at on the post. Here we're listening for the turbo stream from a post record. Don't forget the equal sign because it does spit some stuff out to the DOM. And then we're also identifying each block of content as an individual post's content. So this is how we can differentiate like in a list of posts, which post belongs to which. But the magic is this one. Turbo stream from is what creates all of the wiring you need to listen for those stream requests. Not bad, not a lot of code for all of the benefit we get with live updating there. Now on iOS and Android, things actually work really well out of the box. I'm gonna pull open the iOS app and I'll pull, pull open the Android app. These are both pointing to the latest release from uh, Turbo iOS and Turbo Android. We have the draft post up here, same on this side. If I hit publish, both of those get that attribute changed right away. It's even more noticeable because of that flicker. And that flicker is maybe, you know, you can deal with that in your app, but it's something that we wanna fix. We don't really want this flicker uh, to to happen every time we broadcast the change. It's a little jarring. Luckily, there's a pull request open for both of those. Pull request on iOS number 160, don't propose visit if the location is the same as the current one, fixes this exact same this exact problem. So to update our Xcode project to point to this branch, we can click this little button here to copy the branch name to our clipboard, skip visit proposal. I can then open Xcode and click on our project, our project, and then package dependencies to change turbo dependency rule to branch and paste that in. Hit enter. We're gonna watch 7.01 change to skip visit proposal down here in our package dependencies. Now when we run our app, we will see that there is no more flicker on these changes. Everything happens, well, beautifully. You'll notice that there is still right here where the cursor is a little bit of a um, spinner that shows up right around there. That is definitely a known bug. It's something that I think that we would like to fix. I'd like to fix it for sure. Um, but getting rid of the flicker, I think is a great step in the right direction. And for a pretty quick change on your end, just pointing to a branch. Android is a little bit different. On Android, this is the build Gradle file. We're pointing to dev hotwire turbo 7.0.2. We can't directly just point to a um, branch or a pull request like we want to. Here's the pull request number 292 from Jay, the other maintainer of Turbo Android uh, that fixes the same issue with essentially the same fix for Android. We can't just point to it. 
we need to use an intermediary to have this build the compiled version of Turbo to include in our app. Luckily, there's a service called Jitpack. Jitpack allows us to do exactly what I just described. We can point to a package depository directly to Git. So you can type in your Hotwire Turbo Android, click look up, and then we can actually just select the branch name, which was same page refresh. And it gives us the exact steps on how to provide that dependency in our app. The first thing we want to do is open the settings Gradle and add this Maven URL Jitpack. This essentially tells Android Studio where to look for for repositories. So we're saying, hey, use Jitpack also on top of Google and Maven Central. And then in our build Gradle file, we want to change our dev hotwire dependency to this one. And here it looks like it didn't actually pull in the changes. So I'm going to copy and paste it myself. And what we can do here is change it to com.github.hotwire here. I'll have them both laid out. Instead of dev.hotwire, which is like the official name of it, we're going to point to GitHub. com.github, hotwired, turbo android, and we're going to give it a colon. And then grab the branch name. And a dash to tell it that we want to snapshot it. Okay, so I'm going to comment the old one out, add the new one in. Gradle now has to sync, so I'm going to click sync now. I already downloaded this earlier, so it was cached for me. That might take a little while uh, if it's the first time you're, you're pointing to a new branch like that. Now when I run the app, we have our setup on the right over here. We have our iOS one in the middle, just because why not? When I click publish, we don't get that flicker at all anymore. Looking much better. Um, yes, we still have the spinner for a quick second on iOS. I think that fix is coming. But for now, this is a really right, good step in the right direction for using Turbo 8 in your Turbo native, both iOS and Android apps. I hope that was helpful. Uh, if it was, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you're thinking. And if you're looking for more content on Turbo Native, you can check out my weekly newsletter. That's mazalotti.com slash newsletter. I write and post about Turbo Native every single week. And I'd love to have you subscribe if you're interested so we can chat more about Turbo Native. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.